Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are finally taking a look at the Mars Toys The Laughing Man aka Jack Nicholson as the Joker from Batman 1989. Now you may be sitting there thinking Justin why on earth would you need this? You have the Hot Toys DX version, and yes, you're right, I do. But I'm curious, can this guy stand in as a substitute for those of you out there who missed out on the DX version and now are finding it a little bit tricky to pick him up on the aftermarket? Because number one, he's relatively hard to come by, and number two, he is very pricey. Now, I got this from Comic Sanctorum. Do bear in mind, as I said, it's third party, that means it's an unofficial product. I have put the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. What we are going to do now though, is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art, and it's relatively straightforward. An image of Jack Nicholson as the Joker on the front of the box, kind of done in this oil painting aesthetic. Joker top left and bottom right, as if this is the front of a playing card. One six scale figure on the side, and then a couple of images of the figure himself on the back of the box. Now, right now, there are a bunch of unanswered questions. How does this guy stack up next to the original? Did they copy some of the patterns for the outfits? Is the fit and finish going to be high quality? And the biggest question, is this head sculpt a recast of the Hot Toys one? We will hopefully be answering all of those questions throughout the course of the video. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces, and unfortunately right off the bat there's no display base here. Mars Toys, if you're making high-end figures in 2022, you absolutely must include a display base. It is imperative. He does come with two different outer jackets. You will see them both on him later on. One with the coattails and the other with the press stud to fasten it around the front, a handkerchief hanging out of the pocket, and some purple velvet around the top of the collar, which is accurate. You also get his purple joker hat, it's a nice wide brim hat, and it is actually flocked velvet. The little ribbon is a permanently attached piece, and unfortunately it's a little bit wavy on mine, it's not perfectly straight. Now he pretty much comes with all of the wonderful toys that the Hot Toys one came with, including this very bright orange megaphone. It is cast in orange plastic and it's nice and lightweight. It also is quite glossy. I really like the way it looks and I'm not certain if it's been recast from the Hot Toys one. You also get the extremely long barreled revolver with a real working hammer and rotating section in the middle. He of course used this to shoot down the Batwing. How he was able to do that, I'm still not sure. You do get a cane, it's super simple. Some gold up the top, in the middle, and then the rest of it is black glossy plastic. Now you also get a normal revolver to go along with the long barreled one, and a bang flag to insert in the barrel. It's actually real fabric. And once again, you have a real working hammer and a rotating section in the middle. To complete the look with his press stud longer jacket, you also have a posy. It's got a metal clip around the back, you will see this on the jacket to complete the look. Now you also get a couple of remote control doohickeys, I'm pretty sure this is a walkie talkie. And this is the thing that he uses to release the gas? It could be that it's something else entirely. It's been a very long time since I watched Batman 1989. Now the colours are basically the reverse of the other one. This one is orange at the front with some really great sculpted in detail and green around the back, 
whereas this one is green on the front and orange around the back. You also get a Joker playing card. You only, however, get one. I would have loved to have seen a couple more. You do get his gas mask, which can be attached to his face. It's a nice soft rubbery plastic, once again done in orange and green. Lastly, you do get some chattering teeth that actually chatter. There is a real working spring on the inside so you can push it down, although there's no way to lock it in place, as far as I'm aware. You do, of course, get a full array of gloved hands. If you are wondering if these have been recasted from Hot Toys as well, I'm not entirely sure. This is an official Hot Toys hand, the gesture is exactly the same, but the detail does look slightly different. Do let me know what you think down in the comments below, but the Hot Toys hands straight up look better. There is more texture on the surface, whereas Mars Toys is just a little bit more flat. Now, I'm pretty sure neither of these are actually accurate. He was wearing these sort of velour purple gloves in the movie, where these are literally just plastic. They could have done the same flocking technique they did on the hat, which would have made these hands super accurate. What we are going to do now, though, is get Joker himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him, standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And the question on everybody's mind is probably, was this guy worth the wait? For me, I think he was. He isn't perfect, but he is darn close. This will make for a very good stand-in if you missed out on the official Hot Toys version. Again, there are a couple of things that we do need to discuss that aren't executed perfectly, but at the end of the day, this looks like Jack Nicholson as the Joker in 1-6 scale, which I'm pretty sure is exactly what y'all were hoping for going in. What we are going to do now, though, is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him, up close and personal. Now in just a second we will be switching out the jacket for the other one, because I'm pretty curious to see what that looks like. But before we do that, we do need to discuss the head sculpt. Now I do currently have him wearing his hat. It does sit on rather loosely. I would suggest dialing in the pose first and then popping on the hat to save yourself from having to pick it up when it inevitably falls off. Now, the head sculpt itself is very impressive. We will be comparing it to the Hot Toys one a little bit later on, but there is a ton of skin texture. The paint applications aren't super flat. You can see there's some shading and there's a bit of a gradient to the white. It's not just stark white. There's some gray in there. There are washes. The red lips are very punchy and vibrant, and the teeth are actually a separate piece to the main sculpt. So too are the eyes, because of course, you can move them. Now, around the back, you simply remove the back of his hair, and you get access to two joysticks. This is where I have a slight problem with the figure, though. As you can see, around the back, the joysticks are at different heights. But if we flip him back around, the eyes are at the same height. I'm not exactly sure how those joysticks have ended up so out of whack, but they don't line up around the back, which means when it comes to posing them, it can be rather difficult. But yes, you can move the eyes around left and right and up and down. Now, for some reason, they are rather limited and they don't go the full way left and right or up and down. The movement is rather restricted. The way the hair is done, though, is rather impressive. You can see the seam line, but they have sculpted some detail over the top, so it blends in just a little. Let's be honest, from the front, you're never going to notice that the back of the hair can detach. Now, another complaint I have is the tie. When I was first filming this segment, it actually came apart, and Mrs. Collection and I had to sit down, retie it, and sew it back together. It 
literally, no joke, took us two hours to get that done because of how fiddly this is. So please, be careful when you get yours out of the box. The reason I was futzing around with it was because it was sitting very low and the top button was being exposed. I wanted to push it up and hide that top button, as you should, and that's when it started to fall apart. The collar is also very thick. At the very least, the shirt material is accurate. It's that kind of shiny silk-like orange. It looks great and it's very lightweight. You also have some white buttons that have been glued onto the surface. That is a point of difference between this guy and the Hot Toys one. The Hot Toys one actually uses real sewn-on buttons and the collar is a little bit smaller and it isn't as stiff and starchy as this one is. Now, this guy does suffer from a bit of a weird bunching issue at the torso or at the waist area. This also happened with the Hot Toys figure. He does have some real buttons that have been sewn on with some detail printed on the surface. I'm pretty sure those are card suits, but they are really tiny, so I could be wrong. I do like the color of the vest, but the reason it kind of bunches up is because it gets caught on the top of the pants. If you pull it over the top and flatten it out, it will sit that way until you get a little bit more adventurous with your posing. As for the long purple jacket, he does have the coat tails around the back and it is a very thin and lightweight fabric. So it hugs the body where it should, it's very well tailored, and there aren't any wires around the tails here. The reason I mention that is because the Hot Toys one is fully wired. I personally do like a fabric that can perfectly drape rather than having to contend with wires. So I'm perfectly fine with that, but that's another point of difference between this guy and the original. You also have some real sewn on buttons, which I appreciate. I don't like when they just stick some circles onto the surface and then say, there you go, there are your buttons. This is the way to get it done. You also have some big bulky shoulder pads. Speaking of padding, he is fully padded in the upper torso all the way down to his thighs to give him kind of this portly physique. Jack Nicholson as the Joker looked exactly like this. The proportions are on point. I also really like the pants. The print is quite vibrant, green, purple, with this kind of check in the middle. They do also sit at the right height, and they're not too big and baggy. You can adjust them, of course, pulling them up and down, and they are velcroed around the front. Lastly, down here at the ankles, you do have some ankle-high boots. I thought for sure this was something that was going to be borrowed from the Hot Toys figure, but if you compare them, they're actually completely different. I honestly am really surprised by that. It goes to show that Mars toys really do care about not copying other artists' work. Now, something that I recommend doing because mine out of the box had very loose ankles. I actually took the sock, wrapped it around the top of the ball joint, and then shoved it back in the shoe, and it fixed the loose ankle issue immediately. Now, obviously, I would rather not have to do that at all, but if you do, it will stop this figure from falling over in the display. The shoes are sculpted and painted very nicely, two shades of purple, and unfortunately no detail on the underside of the soles. But for those wondering what he looks like wearing the other jacket, I've also popped on his gas mask. Now it's very straightforward to do, it literally just frictions in place. Do be careful though, I wouldn't be surprised if prolonged usage of the gas mask starts to leave some scuffing on his nose and his chin area. So just exercise a little bit of caution. I've also popped on the posy. It's very simple to do, there's a metal clip on the back and it slides up the top of his lapel there. Now it does sit at rough the right height, but I wouldn't have minded if they'd sewn in a little piece of string so it could sit right around there. I'm pretty sure that's what Hot Toys did. Now he also has his handkerchief spilling out over the top of his pocket. Initially I went to adjust this, but no, it's sewn in place, and yes, that is accurate. He also has that velvet collar section, which I really do like and is accurate to the real life jacket. It's also a very thin and lightweight fabric, so it drapes perfectly. I haven't decided as of yet which jacket I'm going to have him wearing in the display, 
do let me know which is your favourite look for Jack Nicholson Joker. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Mars Toys Joker on the left and the Hot Toys one on the right. And as good as the Mars Toys one is, there is just a certain something that it can't quite capture that makes the Hot Toys one slightly better. Now, seeing them in front of me, I can spot a ton of differences. The material of the tie is different. The material of the shirt is also different. The Hot Toys one is slightly more vibrant. The way the Hot Toys hat sits on the head looks slightly more natural. And the body that Hot Toys have gone with looks straight up better. The neck is a little bit shorter on Mars Toys, and in fact the entire figure is a little bit shorter. Now at the end of the day, this is seeing them standing right next to each other. If the Mars Toys one is the only Joker in your collection, it's going to look fantastic. It's still a really good release. But if you have the chance to pick up the legit Hot Toys one, then in my opinion, even though we're still midway through the review, the Hot Toys figure is superior. Again, that's not to say that he looks bad, because he absolutely doesn't, as evidenced by the fact that alongside Batman, these two pair up perfectly. If you have 89 Batman and you're kicking yourself because you missed out on Joker, this is a very cost-effective way to still get a very high-quality version of Jack Nicholson's Joker in your display. He's slightly taller than Batman, so he is accurately sized, although again, the Hot Toys one is a little bit taller. Now for a much closer up comparison, here we have Mars Toys once again on the left and the Hot Toys one on the right, and I'm pleased to report that I at least think the Mars Toys sculpt is brand new. Now yes, they are the exact same actor playing the same character with the same exact expression, so there are going to be similarities. But if you look at the way they've done the forehead, the shape and size of the eyes, and the shape and size of the mouth, yeah, the Mars Toys one does look to be completely different. There is also a very nasty and noticeable seam line down the side of the Hot Toys sculpt, where that is missing on the Mars Toys one. So either they've borrowed the Hot Toys sculpt and done some cleanup and changed a few things here and there, or they've made an all new sculpt. Either way, I think the Mars Toys one is definitely a strong contender. Just going over articulation. Now, bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a ball joint at the base of the neck, looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will of course go forward and back, and they are on soft ratchets. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down, swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow that goes the full way, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. Now the torso is quite padded, but you still do get a teeny amount of crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there because the padded fat suit ends right above his knee, so the padding extends all the way down over his hips. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee that's very squeaky, plus a very loose double ball peg down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the Mars Toys Laughing Man, aka the 89 version of the Joker. Now going into this, I was really excited. I own the Hot Toys one, but I was hoping to see Mars Toys bring something new to the table. And in some aspects, they have. They've ditched the wires in the coats, they've made them form-fitting, and they fit a lot better, in my opinion, than the Hot Toys ones do. But other than that, it kind of doesn't really hold a candle to the Hot Toys one. That being said, if you take the Hot Toys figure out of the equation, this is a darn good offering. The head sculpt is on point. I love the skin texture, the paint applications, and the moving eyes. If you know how to move them, they can be very effective. He does come with all of the accessories that the Hot Toys one came with. 
except a display base. That, in my opinion, is the biggest crime here. I would have loved to have seen a much smaller format 89 Joker display base with some artwork on it, but unfortunately they decided not to do that. At the end of the video, there are kind of two questions that need to be answered. Number one, if I have the Hot Toys one, do I need to sell that and pick this up? No. I don't think you do. You have the best version of 89 Joker made by any company to date. If you don't, however, and the question for you is, I have no Joker, is this one going to work in my display? Yes. Yes, I think it will. As I said, they have brought some new stuff to the table, and you are getting everything that the original came with, but it does cost significantly less. So for me, I still see this figure as an absolute win. I am very happy with how this guy turned out. Now, do bear in mind though, it is third party, meaning it's an unofficial product. I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only, but bear in mind this is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you are down there, why not check out Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.